All right, let's continue on with all of the might and magic that is the sorcerer. We've already covered the, uh, the warlock and the wizard, so it's only natural that we continue on with the sorcerer now. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about this, but I've also, like most classes, heard bad things. A lot of people aren't super jazzed about a lot of the changes in 1D&D &D in general, but I've heard a lot of good things about the sorcerer, so let's just go ahead and jump on into it. Today we are talking about the Sorcerer. We have lots of new things to talk about. We've got a new table. We've got some very big improvements for subclasses. Let's dive in. The Sorcerer has had a number of exciting transformations. This is the class for the person who was either born with the magic or an event happened and transformed them. This is the closest in some ways we get in D&D to having a class that's almost like a superhero, a yeah. person who just has innate powers. We wanted to enhance that theme in a variety of ways. And you can see that right away at first level in the class with a brand new feature called Innate Sorcery. Innate Sorcery allows this sorcerer to spend a bonus action, basically burst with their innate magic. And while this phenomenon goes on, the spell save DC of their sorcerer spells increases by one, and they have advantage on any attack roll they make as a part of a sorcerer spell. When designing it, we thought of it essentially as the sorcerer's rage. It has a very different role in the class from rage, yeah. but it is this, a similar kind of thing of just suddenly, you know, like, rah! <laughs> yeah, you're with, powering uh, up. I'm powering up. And we wanted to give people this feature right away because this feature shows, especially when you put the new warlock next to the new sorcerer next to the new wizard, it's very clear looking at even just their first level how distinct each of the three arcane spellcasters are from each other. Yeah. Now, the spellcasting feature of the sorcerer has also uh, been improved. As we've done in our other dedicated spellcasters who have cantrips, we've made it so that you can change one of your cantrips whenever you uh, level up. Again, cantrips used to be a, a, like a perma choice, you know. You, you... All right, so let's <laughs> let's start off with look at all this art, guys. the The art that they've been showing in all of these videos has just been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's so cool, um, but. I just felt the need I had to point that out. We're talking about the sorcerer, not the art. Um, I'm loving how there is so much you can do with bonus actions in all of the the updated classes. So it's really it's really driving home your uh, resource economy. Uh, you're you're being given so many more things you can do now. Not to say that there was nothing you could do with your bonus actions before, but they're giving you more options now. And I think that's fantastic, especially at level one. So right off the bat, your your bonus action is you've got choices. Um, and that's fantastic because there's so many times before where I've seen my players just not do anything with their bonus actions because they weren't sure what to do. So now that you've got more options, there's never any real reason to not do something with your bonus action. Um... And then they're continuing on the, the being able to swap out your cantrips every time you level up. This is going to be great. No matter what level up system you go with, it's going to especially be great during... Um, during... I want to say during Milestone, but that... That's not really the case. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be especially great during... Uh, if you've got the experience-based level up, because you could level up in the middle of like a, a quest line... And then be able to rearrange your your cantrips accordingly. Whereas milestone at the you're usually gonna level up at the end of every quest line, and it's like okay, well I don't know what I'm gonna need next. Um, but it's still it's still cool. So if you've got a cantrip that you haven't used the last couple sessions, and then you level up, boom, get rid of it for something that you might use. Um, I think that that's a a great thing that they've put in for all of the spellcasters. You chose it, and that, that was that for the rest of your career. When you get to second level, you get Font of Magic and Meta Magic at, at that same level now. For those of 
you who are not familiar with the sorcerer, Font of Magic is the feature that gives you your sorcery points. Yeah. These are points that you use to unlock various magical effects. And that can include turning those some of those points into spell slots. It can include taking spell slots and turning them into sorcery points. Mm -hmm. But one of the main ways that you, you, you use your sorcery points is on metamagic. And metamagic is a signature feature for sorcerers, just as eldritch invocations are a signature for warlocks. Metamagic options allow the sorcerer to modify spells as the sorcerer casts them. Yeah. And we have revisited every one of the metamagic options, fine-tuned them, shared a lot of that retuning with folks through Unearthed Arcana, got feedback, and now we have the final slate here for sorcerers to use, along with a couple of new options that appeared originally in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And so that all means that now sorcerers have an even better meta magic kit than they did before, that they can also combine with their innate their innate sorcery burst, yeah. um, which gets better than at higher levels. At fifth level, you get Sorceress Restoration, which now lets you get sorcery points back a bit easier than you could before. Then at level seven, you have a new feature called Sorcery Incarnate, uh, which allows you to spend sorcery points to get uses of innate sorcery back. Yeah. So if you've run out of your, your power-up ability, well, now you can use sorcery points to get it back. We've also now made it so that starting at level 7, while your innate sorcery is active, you can now use two of your metamagic options on each spell instead of the normal one, because typically... When a sorcerer casts a spell, they can only use one meta magic option at a time on that spell. Although there are a few exceptions, there's some specific meta magic options that yeah. allow that are that can piggyback on other meta magic options. But again, at level seven now, all sorcerers gain the ability that while they're powered up with their innate sorcery, to double up on meta magic options. Then at level twenty they get what is probably my favorite new name for a feature in the new player's handbook. They get Arcane Apotheosis. <laughs> and uh, simply because apotheosis is such a delicious word to say. Yeah. And uh, what this now lets you do is when your innate sorcery feature is active, on each of your turns, you can use a meta magic option without spending sorcery points at all. And so what this means is, in addition to its base improvements for you, innate sorcery over time will just turn you as a sorcerer into a meta magic machine. <laughs> because you will just start being able to modify. So they really went with what makes the sorcerer the sorcerer, and they decided this is what we're focusing on. We're making this massive. <laughs> And I do, I love it. Um, Meta magic has always been a cool gimmick to me um, that I've I've loved watching my players try and learn how to abuse. Um, I've used it several times. It's it's a fun thing. I'm really happy that they're making it easier to use. They're making it so that you could use more of it. And while I don't think I'm going to see any of my players hit Sorcerer level 20 because they all love multi-classing too much, um, I I am looking forward to maybe making an NPC of my own that's just straight sorcerer or I watch a lot of actual play podcasts. Maybe someone there will hit level 20 sorcerer without multi-classing. We'll see. I love the... the <laughs> Apotheosis. I love that level 20 feat. It sounds really fun. Um, I, it is kind of saddening that I'm probably not going to see a whole lot of it. Um, but I love what they've done with it. It's a great way to make the sorcerer feel more different from the wizard and the warlock. And especially since at level five, you start getting your, your 
sorcery points back easier. Um, yeah, I think I think the changes so far have been positive changes. I can't think of a bad thing to say just yet, but give it time. Watts, he's really good at bringing out my negativity. Your spells in more ways and doing it for free, which then also has the carry-on effect of allowing you to stretch out your sorcery points more. So yeah. in addition to us giving you more ways to get your sorcery points back, we've also made it so that by the time you reach level 20, you're essentially getting sorceress coupons all over the place <laughs> yeah. so, that, so that you're able to do more and more things uh, without spending as many points as you would have had to in the past. Perfect. So all of this together means that the, the sorcerer class itself, which already was all about sort of customization on the fly, given how sorcerers use metamagic, mm -hmm. you now have that in spades. Also, just as, a, as, a, as an aside, a sort of meta commentary, if, if people want to think about how the sorcerer and the warlock in particular relate to each other or or in an, or rather contrast with each other we think in many ways of the warlock as the arcane spellcaster where you have a ton of customization choices at character creation and as you level up i mean it is it is supremely customizable the sorcerer, in contrast, is about customization in the moment. Right. Uh, so it, while it does not have the same amount of build versatility as the warlock, it has a tremendous amount of tactical versatility. And then their companion in the arcane triad, uh, the wizard, is all about just being the most versatile with the most number of spells. Yeah. And and so the three of them together then fill really distinct niches together as the arcane trio. Shall we dive into the subclasses? Yeah, let's dive in. First off, we've got Aberrant Sorcery. This is the <laughs> Tentacles, Engu, Cosmic Horror, one of my favorites from Tasha's by far. Uh, tell me what has uh, what has improved here. So aberrant aberrant sorcery and clockwork sorcery both migrated in from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and they were so beloved in that book and so yeah. solid that they have sort of made they have made the migration intact. So each of them are going to feel very familiar and cozy for anyone who has played them before. Uh, now, in the process, we have made a few tweaks, uh, but mostly they're clarification tweaks, yeah. and mostly about making sure that these two subclasses integrate in with the new player's handbook as seamlessly as possible. And so people will see there are some you know, wording changes, some details, but the core functionality that you love, whether it's your gooey <laughs> aberrant sorcerer or your order powered clockwork sorcerer, the things you love are, are still there. Uh, because again, these two subclasses were so solid uh, and also really are a nice thematic contrast yeah. to uh, the draconic sorcerer and the wild magic sorcerer those were the two that were in the 2014 player's handbook and these two like so many of the other subclasses that we've added to the player's handbook roster help fill out a quartet you can think of the aberrant sorcerer as being a companion to the draconic sorcerer in that in the player's handbook these are the two sorcerers who are associated with types of monsters yeah uh, they are in in some ways you can almost think of them as the monstrous sorcerers right and one of them and it's interesting they both have to do with creatures that often have scales yeah <laughs> uh, but again with the draconic uh sorcerer it's uh associated with you know, the most iconic creatures in our game, dragons, who have a mystical connection with the material plane, in contrast to aberrant sorcery, which is connected to the 
tentacle and star and horror filled far realm, uh, which is as basically as far away from the material plane as you can get. Yeah. And so these two, the uh, aberrant sorcerer and the draconic sorcerer, uh, in a way represent two extremes on the monstrous sorcery axis. This is in contrast to the clockwork sorcerer and the wild magic sorcerer who are really about order and chaos with the clockwork sorcerer being all about tapping into the magic of planes like mechanists uh, to impose order through their innate magic uh, on reality yeah i love how each of these have such distinct personality because again not only butted up against well magic sorcery but also really aberrant sorcery too because you have these things that could be amorphous and blobbish and scales and unknowable and this is imposed order and everything must be known so it's just a nice through line yeah. with all of them I, I i love that these four now coexist together yeah. in in the player's handbook uh and then the two the two new subclasses are then accompanied by the returning subclasses draconic sorcery and wild magic sorcery that have some significant new elements in them. Well, let's get into uh, the Draconic Sorcerer, which was always a beloved one. Oh yeah, so the Draconic So, that was, that was kind of um, more of the, hey, here are the subclasses, but I don't wanna give you any of the information. Um, that, was a, uh, that was a lot of information that he just gave us about about the aberrant mind sorcerer and the clockwork soul uh sorcerer but it wasn't any information a lot of what it boils down to um is that they're both almost exactly the same there was no notable changes uh, most it's just they've clarified some things which is cool um uh, Clarification is always always great because it leaves little to misunderstandings on how certain things are supposed to work, which takes a little bit of pressure off of us dungeon masters, so we don't have to try and make a ruling on something just because the the wording is weird, because um, then we have to try and remember that ruling and stick with it when when it comes up, you know, two months down the road. <laughs> um, but I don't know, I. I like both of those subclasses. I think they're really good, and they they were very solid before, so they didn't really need a whole lot of changes. Uh, I think it's great that they got carried over it and are now um, core subclasses. I guess is the best thing to call them. Um, it should have been nice to have gotten a little bit more information, but I guess let's keep going. <laughs> sorcerer is in many ways the iconic sorcerer subclass yeah. particularly because dragons have been a part of the backstory of the sorcerer class going back to the class's introduction in third edition and so it was always important to us that in fifth edition we retain that draconic element mm -hmm. and to honor uh, the class's origin back in third edition and so what we've done here is we have really amped up the draconic angle of this subclass. So first off, you're going to see that we have sort of remixed several of the elements so that you still have what you'd expect, like your increased resilience. Uh, you know, you still have more hit points than the typical sorcerer. You also have without wearing any armor, a higher armor class yeah. than a typical sorcerer. But now that's joined at third level by a list of spells, which you did not have before. Yeah, and which did not exist before. No, yeah, this is a brand new feature um, called Draconic Spells. And here we were able to give you magic that will assist you in leaning fully into your dragon magic fantasy. And here we were able to really make use of the expanded spell chapter in this book. Here's some examples. 
we now are able to give you right at third level the spell Dragon's Breath because yeah. Dragon's Breath uh, is one of the spells that has been added to the player's handbook. We also, uh, I'm particularly excited about this, uh, when you reach ninth level as a sorcerer and you have this subclass, you can now summon a dragon, yeah. uh, which was not an option for this sorcerer in 2014, but because the brand new spell Summon Dragon is in the player's handbook, you can do what it says on the tin and now have uh, a certain number of times per day, a dragon buddy uh, who's fighting alongside you. The, the, the Summon Dragon spell is, uh, a sort of new version of a summoning spell that we had in uh, Fisben's Treasury of Dragons. Uh, and this one has been retooled to be appropriate for the core game. Now, we, we couldn't resist, so we kept going in enhancing the subclass. Uh, you, you still have the resistances also that were associated with the subclass, but now they don't cost sorcery points. Yeah. Uh, and so this will allow you to enjoy this benefit without having it be a drain on your sorcery point pool. We've also um, increased the speed of your dragon wings. Now you're not gonna be able to have them on all the time, uh, but when you do have them on, you're going to be even faster than you were in 2014. Finally, at level 18, you have a brand new feature called Dragon Companion. Now, you already at level nine started always having, having the Summon Dragon spell prepared. Well, when you reach level 18, building on that, you can now cast that spell without requiring its costly material component and you can also cast it without a spell slot uh, once per day. And you also have the option of when you cast it in this way of not having to concentrate on it. You can have your dragon buddy out and be concentrating on another spell when you reach level 18. And so that means now in addition to uh, embodying draconic power yourself, you can have this dragon companion who is a literal dragon <laughs> yeah, yeah. at your side. All of this together uh, to me means we have the most draconic, draconic sorcerer uh, that we've ever had. So I have been in love with mild magic sorcery since I was a kid. <laughs> uh... Uh, Watt, see, you and I are going to have some issues. <laughs> you can't be coming out of the cuts like that. You just can't. Um, I love that they went, okay, so this is the Draconic Bloodline, Draconic Ancestry, whatever they're calling it in this one. Let's make it as dragon as possible. Um, it's cool. It is. Um <laughs> I don't even I don't even know where to go from here to be perfectly honest with you. Um I don't I'm gonna stick with it's it's cool. It's a cool gimmick, it's great. Um the some of the changes they made are really cool. The the increased speed for the dragon wings is really cool. Um I apologize for my dog barking a second ago. She just does not like me recording tonight, apparently. Um I think at level 18, the being able to cast Summon Dragon without having to concentrate anymore is a little unnecessary, but we can jive with it. Um, they, I, I'm seeing a pattern with the Sorcerer. Not that's bad, not at all. Um, they're taking the, the aspect of one part of it and they're just driving it home. Um... They're trying to make certain gimmicks less gimmick and more um, front and center. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. But I do know that I don't really have a complaint about it. It's just, wow, it's out there, you know? 
it, I remember seeing it in second edition in the Tome of Magic, and it just scratched an itch. It was the concept of pure chaos magic. And there is so much new in this subclass. Such dramatic improvements have been made. So right away, the thing that people will see, and you got to see a preview of this in Unearthed Arcana, is we have removed the element in this subclass that essentially required you to get DM permission yeah. to have your wild magic happen. Now you just get to use your class feature. Now, there's still a unpredictable side to it, yeah. which is a core part of this subclass's identity, but at least you now know that if if the die rolls are kind to you or unkind, depending on what you end up rolling, you know wild magic is going to happen and you're always just waiting to find out when. So yeah. it now really is, it's just a question of when and now, not if. Yeah, because you can force its hand eventually. Yes, you, which you could also do in 2014, um, but you, you have a bit more flexibility here uh, particularly because you can more easily get Tides of Chaos back than you could before. Yeah. And all of this means that you will be able to dip into this pool of chaos more reliably. So much so that when you get to level 18, we have a brand new feature for this subclass where you can, once per day, automatically trigger a wild magic search. Yeah. Um, and you get to choose what happens. Yeah. Uh, and that's why this, this new feature is called Tamed Surge, that by level 18, you have figured out how to tap into your wild magic so effectively that you can look at the wild magic surge table and just, I'll have that happen. Now, there, is, there, is a, there are a couple of limits here. One <laughs> is you cannot choose the final row in that table because yeah. that final row has some really juicy options that you are, you only gain access to if the if the dice uh, give you access to them. We've also made it so that if you choose a row in the table that itself has a die roll in it, you have to still make the die roll yeah. within that row. Now where the majority though of the new material in this subclass exists is not actually in the features we've talked about yes it's in the table it's amazing so <laughs> I, i'm <laughs> glad you think complete so. complete game changer for wild magic sorcery in unearthed arcana people got to see the new features for this subclass yeah and uh there's great feedback a lot of excitement about the new features but in UA, people were still using the Wild Magic Surge table from 2014. And my goodness, is everyone in, yeah. in for a treat? Because, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> because the, new, the table yeah. has been redesigned yeah. from top to bottom. Yeah. And it still involves rolling percentile dice. Yeah, it's still chaos. Oh, it, in some ways it's even more chaotic than it was before. Because you have more rolls that can happen within this roll. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Things can really pop off. Because we, we, per, we perhaps um, feeling a game design wild magic surge, we decided to introduce even more chaos into the table. Yeah. Because, yes, as you say, you could roll something that then causes you to roll something. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so there is almost this, you know, it's like you're watching, like, okay, <laughs> where, yeah. where, where is it going to end up? Uh, and we've also, we've packaged some of the options so like all of the options that summon things are now together and doing that now made room for us to introduce some yeah. brand new options so you're not only going to see the options that were there remixed and moved around the table there are brand new options here some are more powerful than options that were there before others um, lean into the whimsical side of the table, they're one of the options where if you you get one of the rows and then you roll the die, you could even end up with a case that all of those options that transform the sorcerer could all hit the sorcerer at once. Yeah, <laughs> and so 
there, there are just so many fun options here with so many different random possibilities yeah. because of the the nested die rolls that wild magic sorcerers are going to be the wildest they've ever been. Previous wild search tables have been a wee bit punishing. And certainly we still have like turning into a pod plant for a turn. That's still there uh, being vulnerable to piercing damage. Some things can, things can go bad, but there's a lot more good too. Yes. And so you channeling this wild magic search can cause something amazing and completely change an encounter. Um, maybe for the bad, but also for the good. And it does feel way more wild. And, and one of our goals here was, uh, you know, to still have, there's that chance yeah. of something unwelcome happening. <laughs> He's setting everything on fire. You know? right. <laughs> but we wanted to shift the balance of the table a bit. So it was a little less about is something good or bad going to happen and more about there's a small chance something bad will happen, but most likely something cool will happen. Yeah. And then what the uncertainty about is about is, okay, whatever cool is going to happen, how is that now going to affect all of our tactical choices? So we wanted it to be um, much more about the fun of it, the unexpected of it, and lessen a little bit the dread of it, but there is still dangerous possibility because it, it is still a core part of the wild magic identity that yeah, this could go very wrong. And, and these potentials are basically, in, in, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's extended uh, spell list because all the other sorcerers get one, but this is a lot of different options for different spell-like effects that might occur depending on how you roll. Yes. Uh, uh, we've even had uh, internal folks who look at the four subclasses and they were wondering, oh, did you forget the wild magic sorcerer's spell list? Because the other three subclasses have they a are, spell list. They are the spell list. And, and like, <laughs> oh, no, we did not forget. It's yeah. this D100 table, yeah. uh, which has many other spells nested inside it. Yeah. So, yes, a anyone watching this video, if you're looking for the, the wild magic sorcerer's spell list, take a look at that table and you have found it. There is another ability um, halfway in there that existed before where you can make two rolls on the wild magic search table and choose which one you would prefer. So you, you have that progression of slowly yep. getting a little bit more of the reins on chaos magic. More reins on what is even more chaotic <laughs> than it was before. And we did this not only for thematic reasons and for fun, but also because we made the change in the, the subclass itself that the sorcerer is going to be interacting with this table more often. Yeah, yeah. And because you're going to be interacting with this table more often, it was important to us that there be more possibilities. Yeah. Uh, because we did not want you to sort of run through it yeah, uh, too yeah. Quickly. Yeah. And so that's one reason why <laughs> when you as you found when you first looked through it for the first time, oh my goodness, is there a lot here? Well, I finally get to use the big 100-sided die of mine. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so excited. The wild magic sorcerer was by far my favorite subclass for Sorcerer, uh, which I didn't play Sorcerer a lot, but I did use a fair amount of them in my NPCs. Uh, a couple of my homebrew BBEGs were Sorcerers. Um, Wild Magic was my favorite subclass because it was fun. It was random. It was chaotic. Um, I love that they added more possibilities to the, the Wild Magic Surge. Um, the Wild Magic spell list is, is bigger. That's great. Um, I don't like the, the tame wild magic or the tamed magic where you get to pick something off the, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of wild magic. Um, and then the feat that you get halfway through where you get to roll twice and then pick the one you prefer that the whole purpose of wild magic, the whole gimmick that makes it as fun as it is, is you never know what you're going to get. You know, it might be something that screws you over it might be something amazing you don't know 
And for them to be like, oh, well, we'll make it so that you get a choice. Or, oh, you know, roll twice and pick the one you want. It takes away some of the randomness. Um, for me, that's infuriating. Because the randomness was what made the subclass so fun to me. Um, and they even they even went a step further and took away more of the randomness by um, grouping like things together. And that's that's such a, a, a weird and dumb thing to to harp on. I, I will agree with you all there. But at the same time, it's like, if you've got f five wild magic options that are involve, you know, polymorphing yourself, and they're all grouped together, that's, it's less random now. Because they're grouping things together instead of just having it sporadically throughout the list. I, for them to take the wild magic... Especially since what they've done so far with the sorcerers, they've taken the gimmick of the subclass, or they've taken the gimmick of the class, and they've just really laser focused on that gimmick of the the thing that it's known for, to made it front and center, made it you know great, and then they get to the wild magic subclass, and then they seem to do the exact opposite. You know, they go, okay, well, the wild magic surge is what makes this fun, which is it's what it's what people enjoy about it. Let's take it and make it so that. It's less random. It's less chaotic. He can say, oh, it's more chaotic now all he wants because there's more options and some of them are more chaotic. It doesn't really matter if you can start picking what you want. If you can start rolling twice, essentially roll advantage with your with your wild magic surge. You know, you roll two things and pick the best one. Yeah, there's still a good chance that they're both going to be really awful choices. And they, you know, but you're still going to pick the one that, that you're always going to pick the one that, you know, negatively affects you the least, right? And not, not to say that there's anything wrong with that, it just it takes away from the randomness, it takes away from what makes the wild magic sorcerer the wild magic sorcerer. And that's... To me, that's wrong, just because of how they tackled the rest of the sorcerer class. Like I said, they were, they'd they been picking every single gimmick that, that the sorcerer has, like metamagic. They laser focus on metamagic, they ramped it up, they made it better, they made it more usable. They made it so you could use it more often, you know. Um, they didn't do a whole lot with the with the aberrant mind sorcerer or the clockwork sorcerer, um, but then with the with the draconic sorcerer, they laser focus on anything dragon related, so that you feel like you're part dragon with this. You know, it's that's the whole gimmick of the draconic sorcerer, and then with the wild magic, they're like, meh, meh. Let's get rid of some of the randomness, and it's. It's a disservice to the class in general, in my opinion, or the subclass in general, in my opinion. Um, I would love to know what you guys think in the in the comments below. Uh, I love it when you guys, you know, talk to me. We can we always have a dialogue down there. So let's let's keep that up. Um, yeah. If if you learned anything, if you didn't learn anything, but you think you might learn something from me in the future, hit that subscribe button. Uh, otherwise, you know, thanks for watching.